Our day in Auckland was camera free. That night on the ship, they had a folk performance for us. <laughs> And actions. This tells all the songs we're singing about. However, it is accompanied with the takahia, the slight stomping of the foot. Now this enables us to keep in time with each other as well as the guitar. But our most unique feature is the quivering of the hands. <laughs> like to use the single short poi as a percussion instrument in an item we know as pakete fiddle. This is a love song and our men would also accompany this with an implement known as the pakuru. These are the tapping sticks traditionally used to accompany our singing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we'd like to share with you the poi and the pakuru. <laughs> one rule in this game. That rule is not to drop a stick. So let's see how we'll do with the TT Torea, the short sticks. <laughs> materials such as our hardwoods, our precious ponamu or green stone. It was even made with whale bone. Pato also comes in three shapes and the one that you see Taniora holding here is in the shape we know as the mini. Now Pato in English simply means to strike. <laughs> the Pato is the most lethal of all weapons within Maori armory. You see in the hands of our skilled warrior a strike to the opponent's head could mean instant death. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the first of our weapons, Taniora and the Patu. <laughs> now the next weapon we'd like to share with you is known to us as the Taiyaha. Although similar in appearance to the British three-quarter staff, this weapon never left the hands of the warrior. You will also see it is also carved in the shape of our ancestor. So describing the different parts of this weapon, I begin with the 
arero, the tongue. The protrusion of the tongue is a dominant feature amongst our carvings and within our culture. For the protrusion of the tongue is a sign of defiance. Now above the arero is the upoko, the head. Notice the eyes, ngakaru. There are four. These help protect our warrior from all winds, the north, the south, the east, the west. Now these eyes have been inlaid with that beautiful power shell. You may know this as the abalone. Above the upoko is the awe, feathers, the hair of the tayaha, used by our warrior to distract his opponent. Now you see the tena holds this tayaha by the tinana rapa, the body of the weapon. This is where he will maneuver his weapon. However, the most lethal part of the tayaha are ngaate, the sharp striking edges, and the row, the front edge, for thrusting. Second of our weapons, tena and the tayaha. Done in days of old by our people prior to going out into battle, the purpose of the haka was to psych our warriors physically, mentally, and spiritually. You see, they knew back then that when going into battle, it almost always meant death. However, tonight you will see our warriors coming forward, slapping different parts of their bodies, their thighs, their chests, their upper arms. You will see the gesture of the fetero at the arero. This is the protrusion of the tongue. Now this is a gesture of defiance, and it is only done by our men. You will never see a Maori maiden sticking out her tongue in such an aggressive manner. However, we the ladies will do the haka. We will back our warriors with the pukana, the widening of the eyes. These gestures done together were done to taunt, to intimidate, and to frighten our enemies. So ladies and gentlemen, journey with us once again through the corridors of time and witness the haka. We spent a lovely morning hiking up and over Mount Manganui, just outside of Taranga. That's where the ship is, and that's the mount we're going to go walk around. We wondered why there were fences. Now we know there's sheep.
That narrow body of water is what we came through this morning on our way into this bay. The town of Taranga is in the distance, as is the ship. There's quite a bit of current here. If you look closely by the buoy, you can see the little wavelets going past. As we get near the top, the views just get better and better and better. Dave took so many pictures, he had to delete some of the ones from earlier ports so he could get the rest of our day today. We don't know what it is, but it's certainly enjoying itself. Oh, there he is. Wouldn't you know it, on our way down, we found the sign. You can imagine this was Copacabana or Rio 75 or 80 years ago. After we got down, we had a wonderful seafood lunch at a local cafe. As we headed out to sea, we passed the mount. Farewell to New Zealand, we're heading home.